and you raise your hand, Allison will come and let you give your answer to Dave's question. And if you get it, you win $5. Are you listening? All right. Are you ready, Dave? Allison? I'm ready now. You can have this. We ain't going to change it for him. All right. And we have He's got this, this, too. This is, this is the, uh, <laughs> this is the honor system. How many of you are honorable? Yeah. All right. All right. You wouldn't cheat for nothing in the world, would you? Right, how many of you would cheat? Raise your hand. All of them. Okay, I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's good to be here. Good to see everybody in the rain stayed away. Didn't it? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the, for the Sandpipe Festival. By the way, uh, tonight we're honoring the Finns, F-I-N-F, Finns, Feathers, Fall, and Paul exhibit, which is right over there in the museum, and you don't want to miss that. Uh, there, uh, I have some great stuff for you to see, particularly Take the Kids, okay? And incidentally, we're sponsored tonight by Superior Engineering. Would you give them a hand? They're good folks. Spending their money to sponsor us here tonight. Okay, looks like the wind's going to get up. Everybody ready? Wait a minute. Where are our spotters? How many of you spotters? Would y'all cheat? Raise your hand. Okay, I thought so. <laughs> Everybody ready? Here's the first question. Who is buried in Grant's tomb? Yeah, you're right. And that's not the first question. <laughs> All right, we're ready. Here goes the first the first question. Everybody ready? Thanks to Hazen Bannister and his group for loaning me this microphone. Otherwise, I'd be yelling my head off. <laughs> All righty, here we go. Question number one has to do with animals. In fact, our whole program has to do with animals. So listen carefully. What is the most popular... I can't read this. What is the most popular breed of dog in the United States? Hands up. Black and white. Black and white. All right. Allison's going to give you a fine one. Okay. Well, most popular dog in the United States. No. And don't say much. And beat out. Labrador. Chihuahua. All right. Somebody, I heard somebody. Labrador. What is it? Allison, do we got somebody? Okay. All right, it's the Labrador. You can throw it away and he'll bring it back. All righty, question number two. Are you ready? What was the name of the gorilla that was uh, shot and killed, if you remember, in 2016 uh, in Cincinnati Zoo uh, after the three-year-old boy fell into the water. You remember that? What was the name of that gorilla? All right, what do we do? I mean, we've got two that say they Okay, were... any hands up? Yeah, we have we have a competition. That fellow's got a hand up over there. <laughs> Sir? Don't yell it out, paper, please. Scissors. Don't yell it out. Ready? Rock, paper, scissors. No, just one. Just one. Okay. Okay. What are we doing there? Yeah. Woo! All righty. Harambe. Harambe. You should remember that. Question number three, and we're moving right along here. What is the group? What is a group of uh, lions? Oh, don't read it out. Don't shout it out. Raise your hand. Just like you did in school. The one in the black, the one in the black back there. Okay. okay. Now, if you're raising your hand to be excused, we can't help you. Okay. Well, all right. I'm you don't want it? A prize. Huh? Somebody tell me. She got it right. A prize. Got it right? Okay. That's a prize. All right. 
A pride of lions. All right, here we go. What bird is often associated with the delivery of babies? Okay, you got it. That would be this time. Okay, you got to get it right now. A stork. A stork. That's right, absolutely a stork. Everybody ought to know that many babies that they are around here. Now, if you won once, you can't win again. All right. Yep. Go spend that money and uh, enjoy it, okay? All right. Here's number five. What is a baby turkey call? Now, this one's a little difficult. What is a baby turkey call? Some of you farmers ought to know this. That's right. It could either be a, uh, what is it, a poke or a chick. That's it. Either one of those would have been the right answer. Okay, number six. Natural pearls are found in what sea creature? Anybody? Raise up your hand if you know. We don't accept yelled out answers. No. Huh? One? Who said a turtle? <laughs> Oysters. Okay. Oysters. That's exactly right. Oysters. Question number seven. Which animal? Listen, this is a good one. Which animal is incorrectly, by the way, uh, rumored to uh, bury its head in the sand? When it gets scared, somebody know, raise your hand. Somebody said it, I heard them. That's one of the ones that raised their hand, said they're cheap, they could. Okay, here we go, right down the list, the number eight is what famous horse won the Triple Crown in 1973. How many of you know what a Triple Crown is? <laughs> Don't raise your hand. All right, what was the horse's name that won the Triple Crown in 1973? I remember that. That was the only question I could answer. Can I win? Six. Six. No. Six. Okay. She got it wrong. Somebody got a Which one? hand up? That lady over there has her hand up. Who, am I, who are you pointing to, Stacy? Where are we? Right over there. The green lady in the... All right, come back. Yeah, the, the green lady in the pants there. I mean, the lady in the green pants. What did she say? Okay, see it. Uh, I wish my secretary was here. She would know. Secretary. <laughs> we gave that one away. Okay, let's do another one. Here we go. Snoopy. How many of you ever seen Snoopy in the paper? What kind of dog is Snoopy? And raise your hand. Do not shout it out. Somebody tell us what it is. Hey, 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 who knows? Somebody got a hand up? What did he say? A uh, beagle. A oh, beagle. He's a good one. He knows his dog. Must be a hunter. Okay, number 10. Is that the one we're on? Yeah, number 10. What is the name of Robert E. Lee? This is tough. What is the name of Robert E. Lee? Y'all remember Bob? What is this horse's name? What was this horse's name? Robert E. Lee. Juddy knows over there. Anybody got a hand up? There's one over there under the awning. There you go. All righty. That's uh, right over there. Name was Traveler. Traveler was the answer. Exactly. Number 11. Here's a toughie. 
Sudan, S-U-L-I-N, was the name of what type of animal that was captured in China and brought to the United States, 1936, the first one of its kind Give in our zoo. Just in case. Okay, got a hand over here, there's one over there. A panda. That's right, the panda. The giant panda. All right. Uh, Lord. Okay, here we go, number 12. Get over your spotter. What unusual pet became a fad? All right, listen, this is, this is tricky. We like to be tricky sometimes. Allison Darby writes these questions. She likes to be tricky. So this is a, tri a tricky question. <laughs> what pet became real popular in 1975? And if anybody under 10 answers that, I don't know. Where, where, where? Right here? What was it? Somebody raise a hand. A don't panda. yell it out. <laughs> and in the museum exhibit, we have the official handbook of how to train the pet rock. Oh, my goodness. Pet rock. That's exactly right. I carried one around my pocket. <laughs> Didn't do anything for me. Uh, <laughs> Well, I don't even know what number we're in. Number 13. This is the unlucky one. This one is kind of tough, sure enough. No, it isn't. Every child in this thing should know the answer. Lemurs. L-E-M-U-R-S. Is that the way you say that? Lemurs. Lemurs, okay. Uh, is a type of a primate. And uh, uh, they're a native of what island country? Lemurs are an animal of what country? Island country. Anybody know? Raise your leg. A hand. Which one? Excuse me. Three minutes. That happens to me all the time. All right. I run out of time. To the right. Madagascar. Somebody got it? Madagascar. Okay, here we go. Right in there. What is Mickey Mouse's pet dog name? Somebody ought to know that. Right, Pluto! Pluto is right. Who won it? Okay, let's do this. Because I see hands raised and he hasn't even asked the question yet. Put your hands down and you cannot answer, you cannot raise and Everybody sit on your hands. Until the question is finished. Okay? Okay. Gonna go quickly here. Our time is running out. <laughs> All right, what uh, American animal is always put together with the fireman? What animal with the fire truck? Batman! Batman's going to get it right. Okay, let's see. All righty, give somebody some money. All right, hands down. Number, six, number 16. Perfect. A Dalmatian. In the Harry Potter series, give us the name of Ron's pet, uh, who later betrayed him. Ron's pet. Harry Potter. What's his name? Harry Potter. Which one? Girl in the khaki sweater. Okay, we're coming to the khaki sweater. It looks lush pink to me. <laughs> what was his name? What was the name? Hopper. Somebody said it. Did get it. Somebody get it? They're good. All right, right quick. We got three questions and we're going to shut her down. You ready? Number 18. What happened to 17? And this is interesting, really. I'm going to tell you where's why in just a minute. So where's 17? Huh? What happened to 17? What happened to 17? Did I skip it? Yeah, you did. Shame on me. <laughs> Uh, here we go, our right, number 17. Uh, the Great Chicago Fire in 1871 was presumably caused by what animal? Steve the fire Kerr. in Chicago that just about the burned the town down. Cow. That's correct, Mrs. O'Leary's cow to be sure. Okay. All right, Ms. Murphy's cow. 
That's so exactly Leon. That's right. Now, this is interesting. Here we go. Uh, what was the name of the uh, chimpanzee who was the first astronaut shot into outer space orbit in 1961? All right, you really think you know it? Okay. Anybody know right quick? <laughs> Did she get it right? No. No. Name of the astronaut. The, the animal astronaut. He was an astrochimp. You have what it every morning name? for breakfast sometimes. What was his name? Oh, Bush. You're giving too many good clothes. Okay. Give me the money. <laughs> Incidentally. Okay, hold on. I'll okay, nobody. nobody wait knows. just a second. We're going back here. <laughs> All right, you know the answer? Well, that's you are all. correct. Ham. 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 And incidentally, go. listen to this. This is something uh, that I wasn't sure I remembered right. But uh, anyway, the parachute that brought down the capsule into the ocean was made right here in Belton, South Carolina. Right here in Belton that brought you know that? man back to, to Earth. Two more, right quick, locally. Which canine officer was recently uh, shot, killed in the line of duty in Anderson County? You've seen that in the paper. Huh? Like quick, 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 like a jackrabbit. It wasn't right, a jackrabbit. Where do I need to go? Jumping up and down. She's got the answer. All right, then. Wait just a second. We'll see. All right, we got one more, and then we're going home. No, we're not going home. Michael, correct. Congratulations. And there By the way, thank the folks out at Superior Engineering for sponsoring us. One more, and here we go. What was the name of the first animal cloned in 1996? What did they call that animal? Which, which one? Right here? Another name. Got another name. The name... The nickname given to the sheep. Dolly the sheep. Dolly the sheep is right. Thank you very much. Give every winner a hand, will you? Thank you for coming. Have a good one. Thanks thank for that. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Davey. And thank you, Allison, Betsy, and my friend Stacy over here. And um, now I'm going to introduce... Okay, okay, Abigail has something to say. She's the director from the museum. We finished our first cornhole tournament, but we have a group of players who would like to do a second tournament. We still have some daylight left. If we have anyone, a team of two, who would like to come join us for a cornhole tournament, right on the road where all the cars were earlier, right outside, right across from the depot, come on over for a cornhole tournament. Brandon, come on out. Brandon. Two Brandon Rainwater needs that, okay? Brandon, he's right there. Brandon Rainwater is not afraid of the truth. The semi-proud father of two children, he gives audiences his brutally honest yet always hilarious take on parenting. So get ready, parents. Different generations of other absurdities of daily life. Born and raised in South Carolina, Brandon brings a sweet southern flavor to his comedy that makes him hard to hate and easy to love. Always bringing his energetic humor and random expression on the stage. Brandon, are you ready? Get on down here and get started. He has featured comics for comics such as Dick Gregory, Julia Scoggins, Rodney, Perry, Chris Catton, Anthony Johnson, a.k.a. Smokey from Friday, and many more. Are you ready, Brandon? Let it fly. Thank you. I'm good. All right, okay. 
Let's try this again. Y'all mind if I reintroduce myself right quick? Y'all mind if I reintroduce myself real quickly? What's your name? Well, okay. All right, here we go. Go ahead. He was just on the stage. If you weren't paying attention, you might then see him on the stage. Put your hands together because he's coming back on the stage. Start clapping right now for your coming for tonight. Brandon, Shake, Rainwater! All right, all right. How's everybody doing today? Everybody doing all right? That's good, that's good. This is nice. This is the first time I've ever performed in a cookout. I think this is a cookout or something. And um, I think we're missing the cornhole tournament. So it's exciting also. It's exciting also. On my way down here, they were sending me some last minute adjustments and stuff. They told me to make sure I came in here and I dressed real nice because it was going to be like a black tie event. I see some of y'all didn't get the memo though. It's cool. I feel like I'm a little overdressed. What I'm saying is they got me up here looking like a hip youth pastor. I could have wore some regular clothes with this is what I'm saying. I could have. I feel like I could have worn my work clothing. Could have worn my could have worn my work clothing is what I'm saying. But it changed the time. They said, hey, we're gonna start this early. We're gonna start it at 30. And I was 6.30 is kind of early to start a comedy show. Most of the shows I do, they start a little later, 9.30, 8.30, 9, 10 o'clock at night. But as I look around in the audience, I understand why. They would have started the show too late. A lot of y'all would have been asleep. So we started the show early for y'all. It's cool. That's why, that's why we got to get this done before it get dark, get too dark. A lot of y'all going to be like, you know what? It's time to go to bed. I'm gonna go ahead and take a nap right now. I'm gonna go ahead and take a nap. I like I like this belt. I like this area. I'm from a small town also. I'm from uh, Union, South Carolina. Real small, real small. I think y'all got us beat though, cause we at least got a Walmart there. We at least. <laughs> How you don't have a Walmart or a QT in this one place? Like QT and Walmart is everywhere. And I was like, hey, how, how, where's the nearest Walmart? It's like, oh, it's real close, it's like 20 miles away in another city. I was like, so you don't have your own? Yeah, we do, we just gotta go to Anderson, so it's not yours, it's not. You're still in Anderson, Anderson's Walmart is what you're doing. You guys need your own Walmart. That's what we should be doing. We should be voting on getting your own Walmart is what we should be talking about. That'll bring, I feel like that'll bring everybody together. I don't know how you pass time not having Walmart and stuff. I don't know. How do you run into people you ain't seen in a long time if you don't have a Walmart? You have to like, you have to like just go into their houses and talk to them and stuff like that? That's weird. Yeah. That's weird. I meet everybody at Walmart. I haven't met anybody in a long time. I was like, I'm gonna go to Walmart. I'm gonna hang out on Sunday between one and three. Pretty sure I'll meet everybody. We catch the first wave of church people when they get out. You can always meet them at I meet them at Walmart. Is what I'm saying, man. I like this though, man. This is real nice, man. You guys having a good time? You having a good time today? Out here? Y'all ain't got no mosquitoes or nothing to worry about. I see that. That's cool, man. That's cool. I'm a uh, eight. Oh, come on through. You guys ain't been nothing. Come on. I like when people try to sneak. Like we, everybody can't see them. But maybe if I do like this, they won't see me. <laughs> Just take your time. Don't even worry. Give them a good seat. <laughs> Give them a good seat. Yeah. I'm an '80s baby. I don't know if we have any other '80s babies in the house tonight, but I'm an '80s baby. And what I've learned about being from the '80s is that I, I miss, I miss that particular generation, man. Like I miss it, and I hear like granddad and my dad, people from other generations say they miss their generations, and you only miss it when you get a little way of forming, you know. Like I miss the '80s because the '80s was like the last time you could legitimately like pick at someone, and they didn't call it bullying. Like in the '80s, you could really pick at somebody. Like I remember coming home. And telling my mom, I was like, hey, mom, somebody called me ugly at school today. She was like, well, you're not the most attractive person in the family. You need to find something at them you can pick at them about, son. So that's what I did. Like, you can't pick at people now. We even used to have songs in the 80s to pick at people. We used to have songs. It'd be something like this. It'd be, um, 
U G L Y. You ain't got no alibi. You ugly. <laughs> you ugly. I'm like, dang it, man. I don't know if I'm ugly for real, but he just took time out to make a song. I just might not be as attractive as I thought. And that one really didn't even bother me that much. The one that really bothered me, the first time I heard this one, it like shook me up a little bit. I almost went and told the principal. It went like this, the song was like this. It said, uh, D-A-D-D-Y, you don't even know that guy, your daddy. It's like, you're not, you're not, you're not gonna tell me I don't know who my stepdad is. I don't know how you guys think I got here today. That's who dropped me off. I don't know. I don't appreciate that at all. I don't appreciate that at all. Like, I miss it, man. Like, I legitimately miss the 80s, man. Like, I do. We even had, like, cool games back then. Like, I remember the games we used to play back then. Like, uh, putting glue on your hand, let it dry, pull it off. Wow. Man, that was a fun game. I was an expert at that. I got to, like, a level 17. I can tell you how to do it. Look, no, you're doing it wrong. You gotta start here, peel down to the right. That's how you gotta do it. It's called putting glue on your hand. Let it dry first. You got it. You got it. I miss it, man. That's why I try to tell my kids about some of the games and stuff we used to play. I called my kids in the house the other day. I said, hey, I want you guys to play one of my favorite child. It was like, okay, dad, I'm down. What game? I was like, I want you guys to play hide and seek. I said, cool. They took off and was gone for five minutes. They came back. I was like, hey, Dad. I was like, yes. I was like, I can't find it in the app store on the phone. I was like, it's not an app, first of all. I feel like that's my fault. I misled you. An app is like something you can download on your phone and play games and stuff on it. And some of y'all miss that. I want to make sure... I get everybody caught up. <laughs> it was like, but I was, I was like, I didn't think I would have to explain that because the game is called Hide and Seek. You know, it was a lot of things was different, man. Even the love letters was easy back then. The love letters was real simple when I was growing up. I had love letters that say, do you love me? Yes or no. Right, that's simple. If you want to get fancy, you might can add a maybe or something. That was it. Like, that was simple. I seen one of my son's love letters the other day that he wrote his girlfriend. It said, do you love me? Yes, no, maybe. Update it on Facebook. Add me on Instagram, Snapchat. What's your first name? What's your dad's last name? How, how soon before you be driving? It was too much, is what I'm saying. It was too much. So I always try to like tell my kids about my stuff, what I did. And anytime when it's me, my dad and my granddad, all of us together. It's three generations of us, man. And my kids have came up with this cool game they like to play with all three of us together called Who Had It The Roughest? <laughs> growing up. That's what they call the game, Who Had It The Roughest? Growing up. And since my granddad is the oldest, we always let him go first. It's only fair, right? He's the oldest, we let him go first. And I can always tell by what type of face my granddad makes just how much he about to get into his story and just how much of a lie he may be about to tell. They be like, granddad, how rough was it for you growing up? And his face would do like this. He'd be like, well, it was real rough for me growing up. I had to walk 10 miles to school in the school in the summer and the winter. It was rough. He's like, oh, and I also had to milk a horse. I was like, why are you milking horses, granddad? Like, I got a list of animals you can milk. A horse is not one of them, is what I'm saying. Like, no one has never milked a horse. A horse is not one of them. Like, you just said something like a chicken. Like, that's a balanced breakfast. Got no business milking horses. Then my dad would go next. He's like, what about you? How rough was it for you growing up? How rough was it for you growing up? My dad would say, it was so real rough for me growing up. I also had to drive. I mean, I also had to walk 10 miles in the snow. And I also had to swim 
my last five because my school was on the island. I was like, you grew up in Anderson, ain't no islands in Anderson. But that's your story, I'm gonna let you tell it how you wanna tell it, you know. And then it would get to me, and I'm hearing their two stories, and their stories sound real cool, and I gotta top that, you know, I gotta top it. So they get to me, they be like, Dad, how rough was it for you growing up? How rough was it for you growing up? I was like, you wanna know how rough it was for me? <laughs> you wanna know how rough it was for me? I was like, shoot. I ain't had no Wi-Fi, that's it. I just had a pretty good life, actually. I just didn't have no Wi-Fi. If you don't think not having Wi-Fi is bad, go to your grandkids' room or your room or go to work and unplug the Wi-Fi and see how long it take for everybody to come into the area where the Wi-Fi is supposed to be plugged up in and working and ask that same question when they see you over there with it. Like, hey, did you try turning it off and turning it back on? Just do it one more time, let me see. Try turning it off and turning it back on. That's my band back there, y'all like that? I got it, I got it like that, I got a band. I just, out of nowhere, they just start. <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, so that's the whole, third, the whole purpose of telling you to turn it off and turn it back on when you're talking about Wi-Fi is that it's supposed to reset it and make it work better. You know, it's supposed to reset it and make it work better. I know you guys have probably heard them tell you that. You call in your phone, say your phone's not working right. You're like, hey, my cell phone's not working right. It's like, hey, before you do anything, try turning it off and turning it back on. I was like, I don't think you understand. I dropped it in some water. It got ran over by a dump truck. Two little kids grabbed it and played soccer with it. I think turning it off and turning it back on gonna help it. I don't think it's gonna help it. And it got me thinking though, it did get me thinking. I was like, if you can turn something off and turn it on just by resetting it, you know, you reset it and it make it work better. So it making me think, maybe I should do that with my kids. Just reset them. Now hold on, now I'm gonna tell you how to do it. I know you're like, how can you reset a kid or a person? How can you do that? It's simple, it takes two adults, right? Y'all listen, write this down, it takes two adults. You need the first adult to come up behind them and grab both of their little hands and hold them up in the air. Okay, they're gonna be fighting you and wiggling because they don't want their hands held in the air. That's good, that's good because you know they're active. You need the next adult to come behind them and put their arm around their little neck and you just choke them a little bit till their arms stop moving. And once their little arms stop moving, you just let them go. You reset them. I guarantee you the first thing they'll say when they get up is this. I'm sorry. I learned my lesson. I'm not going to do that anymore. I learned my lesson. Now, if you try to get fancy and go home and do that by yourself, remember, I said two adults to do it. So if you try to be fancy, like, I don't need nobody else. I can reset them by myself. And don't be texting me on Facebook talking about, Brandon, I don't think I reset them. This one ain't moving no more. <laughs> I'm gonna simply just tell you, I told you it takes two adults to do this. I told you it takes two adults, man. But like I was saying, man, I am, I am my 80s baby, and I'm just thinking about other stuff that I missed from the 80s. I feel like the uh, 80s was the last time you could hang up a phone real angry. Y'all remember those big, heavy-duty rotary phones, man? Whew. Man, I miss them phones. But you can hang the phone up on somebody that made you mad. You're like, look, Mike, you make me sick. Shut up. Mike's like, wow. He hung that phone up hard. He's angry. Try doing it with the iPhone. Try doing it. Like, look, Mike, you make me sick. Mike call you right back. I think we got disconnected. No, Mike. We didn't get disconnected. I hung up on you. I was angry. I feel like they got rid of those phones though because those phones weren't safe. When I say they weren't safe because it took a long time to dial numbers. Can you imagine somebody in your house, you trying to dial 911 on a rotary? <laughs> like hurry up, quick, somebody's in the house. Call for help, please. I got it, don't worry. Nine. <laughs> One. Ah, you ain't gonna 
ain't gonna make it. That's why they stopped. Police come right in the house. I can tell what happened. He was trying to call us. He didn't make it. This is the third one this week. We need better phones. We need better, we need definitely need better phones because that's not working, right? This is my first time coming to Belton, man. And like most people, when it's the first time coming somewhere, use GPS. And what I've realized about GPS is that GPS is like a person who kind of sort of know where they're going, but not really. Like, but not really. And it's always tricks. Like, my GPS will trick me. It'll be doing real good. And like, hey, Brandon. I'm like, yes, GPS. In .5 miles, your destination is on the right. It's like, wow, thank you, GPS. You're really looking out for me. You're welcome, Brandon. And we're rolling. In .3 miles, your destination is on the right. All right, cool, GPS. And we're rolling. In .2 miles, make a legal U-turn. I think we passed it, Brandon. <laughs> It's like GPS, you were supposed to be knowing where you were going. That's why now when I go places, I always like to ride by myself. So I don't have to deal with people getting mad at me because I don't know where I'm going and my GPS don't know where it's going. You know how bad, embarrassing that is for neither one of y'all know where y'all going? So neither one of y'all know where y'all going. I was like, I thought, I, I thought GP, I really thought GPS was, knew, knew where we was going. I, I've never been here before. He's obviously have. I feel like you're getting mad at the wrong person. Just you hear that GPS, we're upset with you. That's what I'm saying. I also like riding by myself because I may like to do things in my car that you may not like to do, you know? I may like to do things in my car that you may not like to do. Like I like the Netflix and drive. Everybody's like, ooh, Netflix. You shouldn't be doing that, Brandon. I used to text and drive, but I don't do that no more. You know, I watch two movies on my way up. That's what I'm saying. It's cool, though. It's cool. That's my thing I like to do. I Netflix and drive, man. And the other day, I was driving, had a friend in the car, and they was like nodding off and going to sleep. And everybody know that's a no-no when you sit in the front seat. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to be staying awake, right? So I thought to... Oh, I thought my mic had went off. So they kept looking at me and I'm looking at them and they were asleep and I nodded off and they woke up at me and got mad. I was like, that's, you can tell me not to go to sleep, but as soon as you go to sleep, I'm going to sleep too. I didn't even think about that until after I realized I was driving. It was probably not a good deal. idea. That's how sleepy I was. But I also like to drive by myself because I can do things like that you know, a friend was like, hey, you, you should never Netflix and drive. That's not safe. That's not safe. I was like, listen, it's cool. He said, here's a better microphone. You look good in them jeans. <laughs> At least seven people have said so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stop whispering in your ear now because it's, it's as creepy for you as it is for me. We probably shouldn't be doing this. It's a family show. And I said, yes, sir, you're correct. I'd like for you to get out of my ear now. <laughs> and he did, right? You guys seen it. And he did. He just got on out of my ear. So if anyone ever gets too close to your ear, just tell them nicely that you don't like it. And it should help. I forgot why. Oh. I know where I was at now. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so roads now, they was telling me that I should have Netflix and drive, and I was like, listen, it's cool. All these roads now are built in with a built-in spell check. All the roads are. So if you like do something, the road will let you know. It's like, no, they're not. I was like, yes, they are. I was like, watch this. What do you think that means? That means correct yourself, get back in the middle of the road. That's what those are for anyway. So spell check it. I only look up when I hear those things. I need to look up before then. And if I do happen to hit one of those little and you in the car with me, don't, don't, and I mean do not grab that little bar thing on the side. I felt it too. Don't grab that little bar thing on the side. Because if you do that, guess what? We're gonna go three more exits. 
with me hitting those things, and I don't care. Put your hand down, I'll stop. Put your hand down, put your hand down, I'll stop. Yeah, man. But um, back to my granddad, man. My granddad's 83 years old. He's 83 years old, man, and uh, I don't think he knows he's 83. He's uh, recently got on Snapchat. I don't know if you guys, everybody knows what Snapchat is, but my granddad got on Snapchat. And I was like, Granddad, I think you need to be using Snapchat. He was like, I really like all these filters and stuff you can use on them. I like all these things. So he started putting like ink wings behind his back and wreaths on his head and stuff. I had like 10 people text me talking about they were sorry for my loss. It's like, Granddad, you're 83, you can't be doing that. You're scaring people or putting nothing behind your head like that. He decided he wanted to change his diet at 83, he was like, I don't think I'm gonna eat meat no more. I'm gonna be a vegetarian. I was like, granddad, listen, first off, I make your meals. The best I can do for you is to take this hamburger helper and shape it like some broccoli. Like the best, that's the best you and I are gonna be able to do. You're not gonna be able to have no vegetarian meal. Your disability check is not gonna, it's not gonna cover that is, is what I'm saying. It's not gonna cover that. He always have wisdom, and he'll start it off by saying something like, when I was your age, and then just walk off, and don't even follow it up with nothing. I was like, we, you just, that's it? That's your advice? He's like, oh no, hold up, I got it. I remember now. You can take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. I was like, that's right, granddad, that's, that's pretty wise. He's like, unless, Unless the horse is real thirsty. And then you can't stop him from drinking. You know, I had a friend that had a horse. He used to drink uh, a horse at home. I was like, I don't think that's how that phrase goes. Never heard anybody say a horse at home. Never heard anybody say that at all, man. Like I said before, um, I do have uh, two kids. Um, I get rid of them as much as possible. I do. Send them down to grandparents' house. And uh, the bad thing about sending your kids down to your grandparents' house is that when you get them back, you gotta break them from all the bad habits that the grandparents, I'm looking at y'all, that the grandparents has let them do, let them get away with. My mom got those crazy things that she do with my kids. My mom like to feed the kids three times a day. I ain't got time for all that. I was like, I know your grandma spoiled you and let you eat three times a day. You come back up here with me, you only get two meals. It don't matter to me which one. You gotta sleep through the other one. You have breakfast or lunch, or lunch and dinner. Pick one. And I know it's, it sounds rough, but I do feed the favorite three times a day. You know, I do feed the, I do feed the favorite three. And if some of you guys are like, oh man, I don't have a favorite. Oh, my parents didn't have a favorite. They did, it just wasn't you. Pretty sure everybody got a favorite just for you. All right, man, my name is Brandon Shake Rainwater. You guys have been great. Thank you so much. Please stay, enjoy yourself. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Brandon. Everybody give him another hand. That was awesome. We hope you come back again, Brandon. Okay, we're getting ready for the Combo Kings and the Combo Dancing. So I hope I see some people up here dancing as soon as they get started. They're just about ready. Thank you all for coming today. We have had a wonderful day, maybe with a little bit of sprinkle here and there, but that was all. And it's not raining now. So we'll have music in just a little bit. And you will enjoy, and we will too. This is one of my favorite bands that I've ever heard. Dana Russell and the Combo Kings are quite a combination. So get ready and enjoy. Thank you all for coming. All right. <laughs> 